host of the College Hoops Today podcast, silent reporter extraordinaire for CBS, college basketball self-dubbed hungriest insider, John Rostein. This is your life. It is my life, Kay. Happy March. Happy March to you. We're going to talk about... Um, we're going to talk about, of course, hoops, but I want to ask you, you're my movie guy. You're my critical film review guy here. I'm sure you have not had time to see the remake of Roadhouse, have you? I haven't seen the original. You're with me on this. Wait, wh yeah. that would be something I figured you had seen. Complete I was completely wrong here. No, it just never made my rotation of movies that I've watched, you know, from 1984 to 2000. I keep a tight window in that 16-year span, but yeah. it never made the rotation. Have you seen Happy Gilmore? I saw Happy Gilmore, one of Carl Weathers' most underrated films. May he rest in peace. We just lost him. Not exactly Apollo Creed material, but still a pretty, pretty good role for Carl Weathers. Yes, unbelievable. And then we have the second one coming up. Are you excited about that? Are you, do you like remakes in general? Uh, remakes in general? It depends what the remake is. Creed, Jurassic World, I can live with. But beyond <laughs> that, remakes in general... Yeah, Jurassic World. I mean, nothing will touch the original Jurassic Park in 1993. I mean, that's a classic. That's something, you know, you remember when you saw it the first time. But remakes in general, I could probably live without. Uh, John, how are you holding up this March? How's it going? Uh, we see you everywhere. You're on everything. You you know, I saw you advertising for a wrestling belt with your face on it. What's going on? Right. You know, March is a month where the best way I can describe it is I kind of feel like a CPA on April 14th. There's not enough hours in the day. You're trying to cram everything in. But the most intense couple of weeks is the start of conference tournaments to the end last week of the first week. I was on the road last week. I'm back in the studio this week on CBS Sports Network. So, you know, you take your dry cleaning in, you get your laundry done, you get a haircut, you start to feel like you're yourself again. Uh, yeah, and then you, on, on the 14th, you have somebody like me showing up at the door like, by the way, I need to do my taxes as well, and it's all bedlam and all madness. How mad is the madness right now? You know, it's not incredibly mad as we've seen in the past in terms of the potential upsets. You know, we have a chalky Sweet 16. To me, it's one of the best Sweet 16s we've seen in terms of matchup in quite some time. It's the first time since 2019 that all the four number one seeds have made the Sweet 16, but that makes for some scintillating basketball. But, Kay... <laughs> The part of what makes March Madness so special is because of how college basketball continues to, to reiterate that is where the unexpected becomes the ordinary. In the Ivy League championship game, okay. Brown was beating Yale for probably 39 and a half minutes, but one final play and one final run and one execution by Yale gave Yale the opportunity to earn an automatic qualifier out of the Ivy League to go to the NCAA tournament. And then... The Bulldogs, who are a program, obviously, that has been very underrated in the Northeast under James Jones, was good enough to beat Auburn in the round of 64. And when you think about other upsets that were forecasted on Selection Sunday by people speaking with conviction, mm -hmm. nobody talked about Oakland beating Kentucky. And the star of Oakland beating Kentucky was Jack Golke, who five years ago redshirted at a Division II school before eventually opting to transfer to Division I. Okay, it's not anarchy. It's just college basketball. <laughs> it's just college basketball. What do you make? I mean, the Kentucky thing was crazy. What does it mean for John Calipari? Well, John Calipari's buyout right now is $33,375,000. So that's a lot of calamari. And I will say this without hesitation. If John Calipari could get fired and get a check for over $33 million not to coach, it is one of the great accomplishments that we have seen in the history of mankind. Okay, so we've got a great slate. You're saying it's a chalky but great slate of Sweet 16 games, and that starts on Thursday to look forward to. Is there an upset pick you'd like to make with conviction on this program? You know, the four teams that I picked to go to the Final Four, UConn, Arizona, Houston, and Purdue, are still alive. I think they're the team to monitor in the Sweet 16 that could really come out of its region and isn't a one or two seed is Creighton. Creighton had a dramatic win against Oregon in the round of 32. Creighton, as you remember, last year was a play away from going to the Final Four. And this has been the line of demarcation for Creighton's opponent, Tennessee, in the NCAA tournament under Rick Barnes. Tennessee has averaged 24 wins in the last six seasons under Rick Barnes. But for all intents and purposes, the Vols have not been able to get past the Sweet 16. So I nickname all the regions, as you know, each and every year. Right. And the Midwest region this year is the region of tension because you've got Tennessee, who has never gotten past the Sweet 16 under Rick Barnes, and you have Purdue 
the story that has brought people in from the periphery, the stories that has fathers and sons and <laughs> friends and people of alumni of all sorts going through the fact that this could be the year. This could be the year that Purdue exercises its demons. And people might say, well, what are you talking about exercise its demons? Well, let's go through the last half decade with Purdue in the NCAA tournament. Okay. In 2018, you have a team that's good enough to go to a Final Four. And in the NCAA tournament, Isaac Haas, nicknamed the Big Avocado, hurts his elbow and can't play in the Sweet 16 against Texas Tech. Purdue loses to Texas Tech. 2019, Purdue is taken to the gates of hell when it loses to Virginia in the Elite Eight. Purdue was up two points late in regulation. Kihei Clark threw the pass to Mamadi Diakite, as everybody remembers. Virginia wins in overtime. Of course. 2020, no tournament. 2021, you're a four seed, you're Purdue. You lose to North Texas. 2022, you have a team that has Travion Williams, Jaden Ivey, and Zach Eady, and you lose to St. Peter's, Oof. a 15 seed in the Sweet 16. And then last year, the biggest upset in the history of the NCAA tournament. An upset that was so big it caused an entirely different level of scuttle on social media. An upset that was so big that it changed the way that people look at 16 seeds for the history of mankind. Now, why do I say that? Fairly Dickinson last year was a program that was not good enough to win the Northeast Conference Tournament. Mm -hmm. Merrimack won the Northeast Conference Tournament, but Merrimack was ineligible to go to the NCAA Tournament because of the transition rule. So Fairleigh Dickinson not only goes to the NCAA tournament, it has to play a first four game in Dayton. And then Fairleigh Dickinson, David, if he was ever epitomized to be a college <laughs> basketball player, slays Goliath and Zach Eady. And now Purdue is two wins away from bookending the run of all these players. Braden Smith, Fletcher Lawyer, Zach Eady, with something that could only be seen in Hollywood. But you and I both know that life is not a movie. And for life for one time to truly reflect drama, it will have to be Purdue winning two more games because the Boilers are 80 minutes away from immortality, but they're also one loss away from coming up just short. And you know this, when you're this close, <laughs> you're also that far away. Understood. All I remember, I didn't know the whole history of Purdue, and now I do. I like waking my, I like waking up in the morning and know I'm, knowing I'm going to learn something, and I just got the whole history of them. What okay. I remember is that you were so hot on them last year, and you picked them to win yeah. the entire thing, and then they lost in that first round, which you just reminded me of, and I just reminded you how hot you were on them. Do you have faith they can do it and win these games and make that beautiful book and ending? There, this is a different Purdue team than last season. You have the National Player of the Year in Zach Eady, Braden Smith, Fletcher Lawyer, all better than a year ago. Lance Jones, the transfer from Southern Illinois, the grad transfer is a big time addition. But you've got a Gonzaga team up next. You've got the winner of oh. Tennessee Creighton after that if you're fortunate enough to beat Gonzaga. Nothing is easy in life and nothing will be easy for Purdue to get to the Final Four for the first time since 1980. Will they do that? Sometimes in life, just when you think you find out the answer, somebody else changes the question. Because this is Mark. You're an unbelievable specimen. Ron Rossi, we appreciate you. We will talk to you soon. Try to get some sleep. I don't even know what to, I mean, I know we'll sleep in May. We'll sleep in May. We'll we appreciate May. you.